Yes. Yeah, it's one thing going up against 9000 MMR, it's another that you have to play an unfavored matchup with the Invoker against Templar Assassin. And then have Crit, arguably the best support player in the world, roam on you as well. It's just, uh, it's just a tough day. Bad day in the office. Time for Suniko to sit in. Yep. Well, they're not going to get the Phoenix, which uh, Suniko has been playing very, very well over the last couple of days. Oh. And instead they're going to take away the Earth Spirit and pick up the Batrider in the first part of their draft. Dendi seems happy about that. Isn't this just the same opening that uh, Oji had in the first? It is, but we didn't expect him to pick the Earth Spirit. Yeah. Mm. Yep. As Knoxville said, it was two months ago that they last picked it, and they also last picked it in that game. And this yeah. game is first pick. And... Is Suniko's Earth Spirit good enough? We're about to find out. We are. I have let the lifestyle to go through again. OG not playing around. Yeah. This is uh, this is straightforward meta from them. Unless they do lifestealer off lane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think that's. A thing. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> no need to. No. Right. No. No. There's nothing. I mean, they don't need to change anything, really, do they? It's Navi that are chasing the game now. I mean, if you look at the last game, they had this. They have the life stealer in the safe lane with this dazzle, which is a very strong safe lane. They had a TA mid who does well against Invoker, and then they have the Earth Spirit who can go to either one of those two lanes if he's needed. The dazzle can always TP in and help out the mid lane as well. The life stealer on his own. He can be quite fine because he's still quite strong in 1v1 situations. And then they have a bat rider who can either go into the jungle or go in the lane and be offensive. So they're really pressuring the lanes heavily, OG. Do you like the Terrorblade ban? Yeah, it's a, it's very precautionary. It's a good safety measure. I think it's one of the heroes that might potentially prove too strong for, for OG to actually cope with. If they do play an even game up through the early to the mid game, Terrorblade might get out of control. Yeah, Nace doesn't deal well with Terrorblade at all. I think they are less worried about anything else and they're just removing the most obvious win conditions that Na'Vi might have, expecting themselves to be the better team. Yeah, rightfully so. Two bans, Ben, from Na'Vi's point of view. Mm -hmm. Juggernaut's something that, I don't know, if they would have run this game, I guess sometimes they do run it mid. Very good versus Bat Rider. Wow. Okay. Is there any chance we see a Brood in this series? I don't know, I don't... Couldn't I don't tell know you. if either team plays that hero that much. I haven't seen General much on that hero. I feel like they kind of need General to make plays more so than be a farmer. Mm -hmm. And Moon is, I feel by nature, more of a playmaker as well. Good pick up. When they don't ban out the, the Shadow Priest, I think uh, picking up the AA has a lot of value knowing that they've banned out a lot of the, the, the good supports that OG likes to play. Shadow Priest is, was also picked last game, of course. And uh, yeah. Now we're trying to figure out what works against OG, what can break them, and this AA, now they're trying this AA. They want to see if this is something that can work. If they win with this, we're probably going to see this hero bump up in... It's going to be banned in the second phase. If did they did you feel it. like that was more of a block pick as well? Uh, OG have run it with the Phoenix no, before? I, I don't think so. I don't think it's a block pick. I think it's more of... OG like running these heroes that have a lot of heal, some semi-heal, some sustain. I mean, Nyx benefits from the feast, uh, open wounds, the armlet, you can't toggle, Phoenix, Sunray, etc. Lion Phoenix been a popular support duo for quite a while now. I think if Naya, uh, if Navi has any intentions of getting the Timber Saw, now would be the time to pick it up. Otherwise, it'll probably either get banned out or go into, go to the hands of OG. I feel like picking the Timber Saw, then they're kind of committing a lot to this magical damage, which is not that effective against both the Nyx and the Phoenix. Also, Timber Saw against Lion is a bit scary, but. Seeing how Dendi performed that at Hero earlier today, exactly. still go it was for mostly... it, just for the comfort zone. Yeah. Okay. Slant for Navi. It's a pretty all-around solid lineup they have, if they can get past the laning stage. Yeah, they, they're gonna have some difficulties killing off the egg. Unless they get a, they need a ranged mid hero that can sort of help with that. You all know what I'm thinking. It's a wind ranger. Unfortunately, you can't focus fire. I'm, I'm with you, Jake. I, I know, but I'm it's a ranged you. mid hero. 
We've got to see at least one in a best of five with Dendi. Has to be one. So Stark, good egg killer, as you mentioned, and I think it's better that they pick that hero over Dendi's hero, because this time they'll actually have last pick, so yeah. they'll see what Miracle has before they pick that matchup. Although they did have that same luxury last game, did not work out too well for them. OG, they do not actually have a counter to the last of this game. Generally, we see Avenge picked up, but opting for the Lion instead might prove to be a little bit risky if they cannot save their cores. Just, just, do you see Soneko now? Do you see what he's doing? Well, I think he's no longer in his relaxed position. This is why. Yeah. He needs to sit back. He does. Relax. He has to relax. Take calm a deep down. Breath. Listen to the ocean. <laughs> he's, he's out of the, the comfort zone, no? I think the nerves kicked in. Dora, Moon's hero here. I don't know, he's sitting there behind Fly and smirking a little bit. Do you want to carry it for the life stealer? Um, Slaughter, Hunter, let's say. Slaughter, Hunter. Hunter. Slaughter could definitely work. It's it's a radiant Slaughter though, so not too sure. Um, it is quite strong and uh, take down any of the Navi heroes, but it's gonna be a kind of hard lane for him. Who? Okay. It's an all lane Phoenix. So this. We, we've seen Takuga experimented a little bit with a, as a counter to Batrider yeah. with the defensive X, and it's very risky. And almost every team will turn to the Ventral Spirit, uh, Ventral Spirit or the Oracle, occasionally with the Shadow Demon, but Kunka was the one that was experimenting with at a time. It's also very, very good versus the Ancient Apparition. You have a defensive tool that's not actually a heal Wait, the boat. Is Miracle playing it, or are you thinking this is a support Kunka with an offlane Phoenix? I think more likely middling. Yeah, okay. I think No Tail's yeah. played it before. Oh, I think the, I think it's a if anything it's a miracle Kunk, I think. If they put it mid, I feel like it's miracle. No Tail playing the Nakes. I think it's also a nice tool to deal with the Earth Spirit magical damage. You have like a lot of magical damage coming out from Earth Spirit and AA and team fights, and having people not shatter and die to the magnetize early on in the fights is a really key part of Kunka for mm -hmm. this draft. I'm curious where OG want to go with this. <laughs> a few smiles in the Navi camp right now. Ha, <laughs> <laughs> they picked Kunka. <laughs> yeah, Kunka didn't do that well uh, as, a, as a core hero, at least so far. What we've seen as a support, he's been quite alright, but the core Kunka has yet to work out properly. Hmm. What build do you guys go on Kunka nowadays, anyways? Not I good. don't play it. Oh, right, you I, think it's Never, the, ever. I don't play the hero, uh, but I feel like it's the drums armlet into some damage. Wow, so, okay. offlane lifestealer. Wow. Somewhere black is in the stadium rejoicing. Wait, is it? Scientists are baffled by this last It could still be a support conquer. It could be. Well, who would be mid then? Yeah. And she made. I mean, Miracle is one of the few people that I have seen play anti mage mid. I think it's still gonna be a safe lane anti mage, and then probably Kunka mid with offlane lifesteal. Could Kunka Lion AM kill a. kill a. Bat Rider? I don't know. Early on? No, I don't think so. Alright, what's Dendi Zero here? Plenty to think about. Good, Suiko. You can kind of pick the greediest mid that you want because you're not really going to get pressure too much with a Kunkka and an Anti Mage. And OG don't have the best early roamers to pressure that lane. So, I just go back to the Invoker. It's just not Navi style to, to pick greedy. I mean, by greedy, I mean like a weak, weaker mid laner, like Shadow Fiend or something. Oh, right, right, right. But they, they, they do like to. They, of course. Okay, they're gonna go with the TI. It's a good pick. 
right? What you can do, we can do better is perhaps what they're saying right now. Jacob, who's had the better draft? Uh, I didn't get to see who picked what, so yeah. I'm gonna go with Navi. Okay. I feel like this, if, if there's a game that Navi can win, I feel like it's this one. He often Life Zero is gonna have a pretty hard time. Does he go straight into jungle? I'm, I'm gonna go... This is the game that Navi can take. And if they don't, it's OG 3-0. And quickly. Yeah, I'm also with that. I'm not a full believer in the support cooker, so I have to, I have to give Navi the edge in the draft. However, I still think OG will win. Okay. Fans are ready. Players are ready. Commentary team is ready. Let's go back to Capitalist Blitz and Toby won. Thanks, Red. Yes, we are back. Navi versus OG. Game number two of this best of five. The panel, even when Jacob doesn't even see the draft, he leans towards Navi. How are you leaning? It's pretty weird draft from OG, so... Go Navi? <laughs> well, as the panel was saying, maybe this is the one game that they could actually take. I if... think both PyCats had actually this is the most true. If if Navi don't actually win this game, then it's going to be a, a clean 3-0. Just because just it's like... If you can't beat this... I'm not sure if you're going to be able to beat anything. Okay. The lineups, I'm really excited to see what OG have drafted, just because I like different things. You know, we haven't seen Kunkka, Core Kunkka, in such a long time. So how are you meant to play these lanes out? Like, OG normally are really, really strong in their lanes. How do you play a Core Kunkka, a Core Lifestyle, and a Core Anti-Mage out here, Blitz? You just be really greedy and hope that one of them comes out of the laning phase okay. Like, it, a lot of this meta right now is you just need as many cores as you possibly can with two support heroes that scale fairly well, and you can almost always make a comeback because it always just takes one fight. The off-plane life sealer is something that Liquid has also experimented with a few times. We saw them use it against OG actually earlier today. It has some decent synergy with what they have so far, especially since uh, you can do the blink, blink anti-mage, the Phoenix dive plus the infest bomb. I felt like it was only okay for you guys because of the Riki. That, that really seemed to enable him to be able to move around. Even if it didn't actually work out that much, they weren't able to get that many pick-offs with that combo. It was still at least a, a plan. I'm not feeling the same kind of confidence about like the Phoenix dive in fast combo or something like that, you know? We'll see how this goes. I'm pretty, I'm pretty curious to see how these lanes work out for OG because I assume they have a game plan behind this and yeah. the core Kunkka is something we don't see very often. The first team I saw run it in quite some time was actually Secret at the Major. For RTZ, so there must be something to it. Well, keep your eyes peeled for it. For now, the laning phase is going to start to settle down, and OG are running a defensive tri lane to protect Anime Mage early on. I suppose when you got a Bat Rider and an Earth Spirit influencing this lane, you want to bring some extra help because General, he's not, oh, he's actually not backing up on Miracle here. He doesn't have Fire Fire available. They turn on the Sunray, and General starts to burn inside the Nova. The Roar effect going all over General. Does Crit have enough damage? That last attack is not enough. Dropping down to 18 HP. Snaker will ball himself away as well. Rough. Seneko really couldn't do anything there. He just like ran forward and tried to right click Miracle. I'm trying to keep my eye on what this mid lane, how it ends up doing. Konka versus Templar Assassin. I can't say that I am overly familiar with how this matchup goes. I look towards my mid expert, mid only player, Blitz Dota. I think it's pretty good for TA. At the same time, you can do a lot of damage to her with the constant torrents. And yeah. you have your own personal refreshing, at least for the damage in terms of the Tidebringer. But when it comes to just pure CSing, I think Dendi will have the easier time of this. And again, they're dire side, so another thing where we're going to see the Templar Assassin be able to take advantage of, most likely, as long as OG don't claim too tight a grip of this game with between their Lifestealer and their Kunkka. Those are going to be the two heroes that um, are very teamfight oriented, pick offs, and they're going to be the kind of the tempo controllers for OG that will give Animage the space. Now, Miracle is known to, to fight a little bit more often, especially with his AM, um, where he like like he doesn't always go for the Battle Fury builds, and he'll actually be very active. So we'll see how much he chooses to do that in this game. So whenever you play mid against a Templar Assassin, what you want to do, Toby and Cap, is you double wave. You make sure that she's fighting against as many creeps as possible and you just make it hard for her to fight and go for individual creeps. 
and that's something that you can do with Kunkka, but what's happening right now is that Dendi's trying to bully him as much as possible, and he's auto-attacking the wave much more than you'll normally see a TA do, just so that uh, she can keep pressing the lane back. It does seem to be working out as you expected. The CS advantage pretty heavily in the favor of Dendi, 11 and 7 to him right now. But yeah, and then again, Kunkka isn't exactly all focused on CS. We'll see if he has the larger impact as we start going 15, 20 minutes into this game. And we'll see that Torrent, uh, X marks the spot, Torrent combination plus the big impact of the boat, which that is one of the big teamfight winners oftentimes between the stun as well as the damage reduction. Moon in a little bit of trouble here. Pops the Rage will be okay in the end. Yeah, Alstar can't reach him for that last attack, and Moon makes sure Alstar can't attack from the cliffside either. He's gonna, yeah, he's gonna life leech out. No, he didn't no, want. He's it. gonna. He, just, he wants to deny himself. Yeah, exactly. He's already bought up the Iron Talon recipe anyway. Got to be efficient. Got to be efficient as much as possible as an off laner. Well, he's three minutes in. He's already managed to find almost four levels, and that's from standing on the lane too. Yeah, but it's also not a lane that he's particularly threatened by, uh, just because they don't have any heavy nukes or disables coming out from the ancient apparition. The Earth Spirit is always bottom lane, so he's dealing in a one v two scenario. Slark may prevent him from being able to get like very active CS, but he should always be able to get experience. So far in this game, this bottom lane. Or Navi splitting some XP, both about to hit. They actually just got level three. And There's the combo. You could see the, how the torrent rips through refraction really quickly due to its uh, multiple instances of damage. Yeah. Seems Andy. to have a uh, great byproduct too, the fact that OG keep controlling these runes. They've taken both of the last runes, two minute and four minute runes. Yeah, it's very important to do against a Templar Assassin, especially because she relies so heavily on last hitting through that refraction. And Dendi's going to have to bottle crow. First time around, but things so far, not really one advantage over the oh. other is they're gonna go for the next time. Torrent, sun rays up, they wanna go for it. The kick's coming in from Sadeko, but it's all too late. It only connects on fly. But it's all too late. OG supports quickly rotating. Yeah. Not, not to defend the, the mid this time, but to attack. Yeah, Templar Assassin not respecting being half HP with the refraction against the, the torrent. He's gotta remember that the refraction is just a non factor and it only takes plus one to make that gank successful. The good news is during that time, the Batrider is going to get a little bit of farm. General doing very good on the Batrider, so throughout this entire tournament, but OG kind of just showing Navi, that's how you make a gank quirk against a TA. And he's also... Oh, uh, they're going to go for it again. Yep. X, same Tarn, exact thing. Nortel still at the end of that double damage room. There's a lot of damage to Dendi with a sun rate there. No refraction. Up in four seconds time for support. Now Saneko boulders his way forward to Nortel. Gets the kick off Arstyle. There's no man that's not going to cast here. So the Torrent connects him to Saneko and fly. Basically makes a buffer between himself as well as the Kunker. Moon, let's see, he, how much CS he has? 15 and 4, Slark, slightly behind in the AM, but not a major difference. It looks like the Earth Spirit's going to be starting to do some stacking for the Batrider so he can kind of catch up to where the Life Stealer is at and start having that heavy blink around impact. <laughs> Moon at top, just trading hits with Didier Ra, and I think that ward might have been really low. A little bit obvious fly. General trying to move over, fly, jumps out, the Vortex down from Arstar, they get the sticky napalm, Icarus dive's already been used, support's coming back from the Kunker, so no tell on his way, he does have the ship available, and General, maybe he's gone in a little bit too deep, there's the X mark, pull him back at the right time, ship will connect, Torrent and Sunray, General starts burning, Denny's moving over, he wants to kill over on fly, no melter, no big burst damage, slowing him down, fly, trying to live with the stick charge, but the boulder comes through from Snaker, with the extra stun, allowing Snaker to find that kill. All Still ends up it. being a one-for-one one trade. All worth it, though, because he traded his life for the Bat Rider after that overextension. He may, like, end up giving a kill to Dendi, but that doesn't matter. No Tail is doing very well for himself. Uh, I'm excited to see how this Kunker really plays out in the mid game. Very fun hero to watch. It's general. A little bit of go there, but nothing major going to come of it. You can jump again onto Dendi, perhaps. They just lead with a regular Torrent. And that's gonna be it. I don't think they really have kill potential on this hero anymore. Navi are gonna make a much more concerted effort to try to help him out in this mid lane after seeing that gank attempt happen twice. And although the first one is successful, overall this is where OG uh, start to shift their focus. Era, very, very low on this top lane, try to battle up against Moon. Moon jumps inside of a creep, infested, and pop back out again. 
So even when Didier Ra did find a little bit more essence being shifted over, Moon was able to survive. Hey, Moon's only 100 net worth behind this slow. Oh, they bring in help. He's going to rage his way through. That that pounce doesn't hold him. This is, this is why he's able to get so much, right? Because it's a lane that doesn't have kill power against him. Yeah, there's no instant initiation. Even with the Earth Spear coming over, I'm not 100% certain they would be able to get that kill because you can always just uh, rage and fest or use the phase boots to walk away. Not it's, a whole lot. Yeah, it's like questionable whether he'd be able to get the kick in the first place. And even if he does, he'd have to chain the silence like perfectly with a stun wearing out just to give them enough CC time to come close to killing the life stealer. And that's always uh, a bit worrying, right? When you talk about like, okay, you have to execute this game perfectly just to be able to get it. It means that it's sometimes it's better not even to try it out. And I feel like Seneco is being more effective in securing general some some farm. And considering how well he's played this tournament, they oh. should do everything they can to enable him. Dendi you're gonna get drags back and again it seems like a rinse and repeat combination with the extra stunning from no tell that means they get the ulti off and that concerted effort from Navi will may even end in the support gonna go down X. he's frying up there's the X mark spot drag it back quickly make sure he doesn't get back under that tower have any other help rotate over at the same time up on top lane Dear Ra's gonna go down the ancient apparition dropped just a couple of seconds beforehand oh, and oh. now it's 6-1 in favor of OG so about what PyCat said. <laughs> <laughs> this is very, very bad start, obviously, for Navi. They had these kind of like a little bit greedy cores with the Templar Assassin and Slark. They have opportunities as heroes to be able to do a lot around 20 minutes, but with Are they gonna go lane in? phases, Torrent, and they've got Finger Sun of Ray, Stun, Finger of Death, Denny, not enough damage to kill him off, he's gonna stick around, gonna kill off crit underneath that tier one tower. The, in fact, the damage from the Are tower itself will do it in general. The Firefly, all over one, they bring down the Phoenix, no tell. Now he's in trouble, as Zero jumps forward. He's already going for a Shadow Dance, maybe, okay. Well, back out, Na'Vi find three kills, a very quick rebuttal. Way, done. That's way too over aggressive around yeah. that tower. Like yeah. the problem was when they half committed for it. Like crit continue to go, but the rest of OG backed out. So once he uses his finger, Dendi says, "Okay, you've expended everything. There's no point uh, in being afraid of you anymore." While the rest of OG weren't 100 percent sure whether they wanted to commit to that fight or not. Yeah. And Navi at least make good rotations to be able to capitalize on that kind of overextension. Even if they fully committed to the kill, they would have probably still picked up three. And considering how far behind they are in the laning phase, they probably would have been happy trading Dendi away for three heroes in return. You still got that ticking time bomb though, a miracle. Like a man who does his first rotation, finds a kill, still walking around with Vanguard, 4.4k gold net worth on him. Bottom though, Navi's two support smoked up. They're gonna find it. Crit. Observer Ward reveals it. Seneco. He actually turns around a little bit slower, so he now is out of range to get the boulder onto Crit, allowing Crit to get that follow up stun to Seneco. And he connects the pull for him. Very kind. They are gonna get Ward Vision down, though, and I think that was the real goal, because it is ultimately just two supports ganking. Like, yeah. the likelihood of that going off is somewhat risky, anyways. Meanwhile, though, Miracle's gonna get a lot of free farm up at top, even gonna pressure this tower because he knows Navi just simply do not have enough to kill him at this phase of the game. This is what uh, uh, Miracle style of Animage is able to do. He he bullies really hard when he picks up that Vanguard. He's very active in fighting. He rotates like it's not your typical Animage that just sits back and uh, AFKs away and you know just tries to get Manta style at the very minimum before he fights. This is quite the opposite. Miracle is going to be uh, in all of these engagements if possible, and he's also gonna try and take towers as much as possible keep your eyes too, on miracle he doesn't have to care too much about navi until the blink dagger's up on general it's up it's already up it's ready now he's waiting there's your firefly the real as soon as then the ice blast on his way up miracle gonna get hit kicked and brought down overstaying is welcome the result however will still be og taking this mid tier one he got tricked really hard they used the scan on that ancient uh stack and og probably thought to themselves okay that means your time is clear Navi's gonna try to uh, contest for the stack. Uh huh. You can continue to push in, but almost immediately just gets gone on. Very well done by Navi. Yeah, that's exactly the kind of blink dagger rotation you want to see. Where the first time you reveal that, you get the kill on the most important hero of OG. Hopefully, they can continue that though. Digira once again being threatened by Moon. That early shadow amulet able to run away, however. 
But Moon's getting more and more money as well. Yeah, he's just making himself space, right? Like, he, he's never thinking, I'm going to kill the Slark. He's thinking, I'm going to push the Slark back so I can get free CS here without being bothered. Yeah, that's got to be really frustrating that a life sealer can just bully you like that. Oftentimes, whenever you see the safe lane bullied like that in competitive Dota, they're just saying, well, what is my job here? And so you're going to see Ditya Rod just continuously go to the jungle and farm, but this is not how he wants to play this game. You don't want to just get bullied by a solo life sealer. And the even more frustrating part is, you know Moon's up there alone. It's not like he has people behind him, it's just that Navi have expended so much that they have to reset. Which means that they really gotta make a lot out of this Ancient Apparition pick. And the Ancient Apparition is really what allows the Lifestealer to be so aggressive uh, against that dual lane. And just because he's not able to do anything about uh, the Nakes pushing forward. So in that case, they really need Artstyle to have heavy impacts with his Ice Blast as they uh, push past 15 minutes. He's almost got the hand of Minus, so he'll start making that, um, that progression in items. I would like to see him get a four staff as well though and just be a little bit more active in in combat in that regard yeah that's often what you're going to see out of the support aa instead of going straight for that uh ags like people used to mm -hmm. people are starting to really realize when you have two four staffs on your team it makes it nearly impossible to catch out any sort of course oh but speaking of mobility crit with the blink dagger and an infested life stealer inside of him this is one hell of an infest bomb not the not the early kind that we saw from the Riki that would allow liquid to be able to you know rotate around as soon as they hit six on the life stealer but yeah, they hear the fact that they got uh, blink dagger so early on lion may catch navi off guard yeah Kurt trying to play independently right now trying to force something on the map I do like this play. They're not just straight up five manning. He's still looking for something aggressive, but now he's going to connect with the rest of his team, expecting Navi to get into a fight, which they're going to do as general TPs down. Okay, Iran's moving forward. He's got the full shadow blade up, so he can come into OG. They want to jump that ice blast. They have a connect overall miracle as Crit. Now he pops out the sun rays up, and they go into oh, no, Iran. They burn so hard. Crit will get the double kill. Moon's looking for a little bit more. X marks the spot will actually bring the bait to him. As Dendi up and towards the air, bounces back down again, hidden inside the Mel. The Back in with a firefly, burning down Chris Walls. No time, but can he survive through this? No, he can't. Not with the mana void is there, and Fly is the lifeline. They have to back up to the tier 2 tower as Miracle just stands his ground. The fire cap, it burns. <laughs> it hurts so bad. <laughs> Batrider thought he was going to be a better hero than Phoenix and output more fire damage, but that's just not the case. Everybody, it seems like everybody forgets once in a while that Phoenix is the best hero in this game. No. And Fly just has to gently remind them. <laughs> gently remind them. I love no. how they can just keep themselves up too. They're doing the, uh, okay, fall up, forward, ice blast hits nicely. The kick follow up, Miracle, gonna blink himself away. They've already lost Fly. And with that jump forward, maybe there's enough damage. Here Ra goes inside the Shadow Dance. He wants to kill over on Move for Kumka with the ship out to find one. Denny's there to help out. The Life Seal is down and no tails on the run. He'll send Denny back into the torrent. But did Ra? Kurt catching up close, he needs to get this pounce over on No-Tail. x my spots back up again, oh, that's nice double double the crit. The turret not going up from No-Tail, no, he can't turn because, him. yep, there's your eyes. Able to hold No-Tail in position. General is still hunting, searching for crit with a flame break bouncing down. They're gonna find crit. Sick charges up, he's got no stun, gets a double stun out to Dendi in general. But d Ra runs in so quickly, oh. he's gonna find crit. Navi are racking up the kills. General are able to switch off the tower aggro, see so he'll also get out safely. Well, the first fight goes pretty nasty, but second one, I'm not sure if that was just OB, OG being like overconfident and continuing to push forward like that, but they get into a secondary fight that Na'Vi just mop up. It was really well done by Na'Vi recognizing that they shouldn't be afraid of the second fight. They know that the Phoenix's major spells are on cooldown. The Sunray was just expended to go for the heal as well as the egg. OG did, did not think that Na'Vi was going to re-engage, especially after a fight that went like that the first time around, but... Second time's a charm, and I really like that they continue to play aggressively, even under the tower, making sure that they got that crit kill on top of that. And with a lineup like this, when you don't have large cooldowns, you can't afford to let one team fight make you scared of ever engaging. And Na'Vi, they're certainly not ones to be scared of anything. They have the Blink Dagger and Drums on the Batrider. We can see the Ancient Apparition perhaps start making that... Uh, 
four staff with a thousand gold that he has. Did he roll? Does Did he, he just want need it? To find Can he take it? Off. Pounce forward with a dark fight, gonna break free. Crit's gonna get the sun off. Quickly into Shadow Dance. So Yura does not have the damage to finish this. Not when he also scattered at both Moon and No Tail around the corner. He's waiting for it. He can't pounce. He can't go in for this. Now he can pounce, but he also wants the sand. He has to help the sand. Pounce us down. Instantly drag back into the wow. ship. And Did Yura be brought down, but it takes four OG heroes to do it. While Miracle was escaping from the engagement up on top. I say escaping, Snakeo has 19 HP, limping back to base. You see what Crit did there? Cap, he goes through the Hex first, buys himself like a half of a second, and he knows that because uh, the Sark's immediately going to go for the Dark Pact, he Earth Spike second. Yeah. Whereas most people's instant reaction is to go for the Earth Spike first, which ultimately ends up saving him. Right, because if he does the Earth Spike first, that means that uh, the invis from the Slark... <laughs> Walks into it, they're gonna open wounds up, and Dendi, well, you can't escape from this one, trying to drain out the pound. The Ice Blast is on his way, but Dendi's already dead. So Ice Blast connects on to Snakeo. The TP will complete, but he's not close enough to chase. Man, I'm loving this Kunkka pick. It's countering the Slark, it's countering the Templar Assassin in lane. That's one of the things, right? Like, you can't get rid of X marks the spot with Dark Pack, so your mobility is super limited as, uh, as a Slark to go in and out of a fight. He doesn't have Lasso, but he's looking for this. Oh. Okay, fly. Slark's gonna get popped with the help. Uh, well, I'll save the help. It's Crit doing most of the work. Sorry, General. Were you trying to set something up there? <laughs> uh, I believe your damage dealer is now gone. He also, like, without Lasso for 10 seconds, he had a moment where he could have jumped, but there's just no catch. Yeah, right now, OG. They're also allowing Miracle to continue to farm out this top lane. He's going to have his Battle Fury completed now too. Much to the dismay of Na'Vi fans is... They're just creating so much space with these four heroes on the southern side of the map. Here comes General. This time Lasu is up. He's going to find the target. It's going to be Crit. Ice Blast also on his way. going to hit Moon as well as Crit. The oh, Evo no, Elmo Sineko. He caught the tail end of the ship and now into the Supernova. OG. They're forcing Na'Vi back, but then he's got no other choice. He has to come back into the sun. X mark spot from no -tell. This Kunk is doing his job, and Dendi can't hide inside the meld. Sunray does way too much of, of a job, and OG, they're taking all these fights also without Miracle, who's taking the tier 2 tower up on top lane. He only just got Battle Fury, he's going to have 2200. That is so demoralizing when you watch your team just get exploded on, you only get a support, and meanwhile, one position player, Miracle, just sitting up top, continuing to get massive amounts of farm while his team creates space for him on the bottom half of the map. And this is just OG working together as a unit. This is one of the games where they just haven't had to use Miracle whatsoever for the victory. Look at Miracle. Diddy Ra is literally standing in front of him and he's farming his own creeps. Yeah, what, what can he really do? Nothing. They, without the Batrider and the Earth Spirit, because they need both, and the Ice Blast. They just can't kill the Vanguard Animage. They need all their disables, plus the extra noob damage of the Ice Blast to ensure the kill. We've seen it in the last couple of fights where they try and jump Miracle first uh, at bottom lane, and every single time they just don't have the long enough disables, he always blinks himself away. Right now what's going on is Na'Vi is severely underestimating how much the ship is uh, saving everybody. So they're expecting somebody to get bursted down with the AA Ice Blast. Nobody gets bursted down. OG turn things around, they re-engage. And they have so many different spells to re-engage. As long as they have that supernova prepped and ready, it makes it nearly impossible for Na'Vi to get into a straight engagement and crit every single time with Moon inside of him. You're not expending too much because this is your 3 and 4 position. If you get a kill, fantastic. If you don't, you still have somebody on the map farming. Yeah, you still have both your 1 and 2 position continuing their item progression. Even then, Lifestealer is still well ahead of the Slark. Tendi's farming underneath the mobs and Sentry, but they don't even go for him. They go for Arstyle. Just remove the Ice Blast from it. It will still connect to overall Moon, but now, well, with the Sun Ray, they get the last two off of Moon, but again, the ship's coming in, and Dendi punches tickets. Miracle just walks over the deck, comes, jumps forward. The Mana Void, not enough to kill off Sineko. Four heroes gone. This may be a full team wipe. General waits on the hillside and then blinks away to safety. But OG is ready now to push straight down the mid lane, takes tier two may even chip away at the tier three or look towards roshan yeah you got to slow down a little bit og no need to dive the base just yet man yeah, no we are only 21 minutes no in he's got ether lens he's always got this super long range x that almost catches general right there he's got the veil of discord as well so he not only enables like his nukes to be able to do more between the torrent as well as the boat but then the heroes behind him like the lion are able to just pop 
And it's so dangerous. Like, Navi, you, against a Kunkka, you have to be very specific on your uh, positioning. It's even worse than facing a Disruptor, because Disruptor, at least, you can, like, stay five man and grouped up. But here, the, the Kunkka has such long range to be able to catch you with the X, and he brings you back to that spot guaranteed. It's, it's, um... It's one of those abilities that you just spam out every once in a while, right? Like, if you hit the X and Navi correctly put their positioning well enough to be able to defend against that X, then, okay, who cares? Like, it's up in another, like, two seconds or something like uh -huh. that. They're coming again, too. Infest combo! Navi have to make something happen around the map pretty soon. Because you can't just continue to let this happen. What's going on right now is that whenever Lion has the Finger of Death available, they're just making these nighttime raids that Navi simply just can't deal with. You have to eventually make some sort of proactive move. The downside is Navi are probably like, how? Nobody's really showing on the map very often. The only person that does is Miracle. He can always just blink away. He clears camps so quickly now with his items. But for Navi, this is the worst kind of way to lose a game. I think they should just go for the smoke, try to make something happen around wherever they have vision. Yeah, that's the hardest part, right? Is that OG have so much aggressive vision and Navi, it's only 23 minutes in and they're on the losing side of things. You don't expect them to be able to pick up a gem yet. Just try and battle it with a Slark. At least he's he's a walking around detection. And you are getting close to some other big items. Arstyle's rapidly approaching towards that Aghanim Scepter on the Ancient Apparition. The Hand of Mice has allowed him to find that kind of money. Dendi just needs 100 gold, and then he's got himself the Desolator. So items are going to start rolling in for Navi. I know the the hill is still quite high. Like, it's a 12k net worth deficit. That's not and a almost token. 10k That's experience. Like, we can ignore that kind of stuff. But Diddy Ra finds an opening. Initiates with a Silver Wrench. Goes on fly. They jump in. They isolate no tell. So no ship this time around. And the Ice Blast connects over on Crit. Flies gonna fall as well, maybe he won't into the Nova. Diddy Ra wants to bring it down to help us out, they get through it. Now they move over, Miracle looking for the Mana Boy, but who's your target? Now he's getting stunned up, is there actually a follow-up? Uh -oh. Diddy Ra is here, there's your Mana Boy, but minimal damage. He has to blink northwest before Heroes already lost the illusion to try and... Well, I don't know what they're doing. Oh. They're taking out the Creep Wave, the Blink Out, the TA Trap slows down Miracle. They're on the hunt, but they won't catch up. Miracle will survive, but OG lose the fight. And that is the power of an Earth Spirit right there. Sometimes it's intended, sometimes it's not, but Zaneko had the perfect kick that countered the uh, the attempted initiation by the Lion. He ends up with his boulder hitting Lion right as he comes in and crit did absolutely nothing in that team fight. He just served as uh, an opportunity for the Infest to pop out, but it was right underneath that big Ice Blast. Navi showing exactly what they have to do in these fights. Isolate the Kunkka, make it difficult for him to get any sort of setup, and make him use his torrent and his ghost ship reactively. Every single time you allow him to use it uh, actively, it just makes it difficult because you want to make No-Tail just kind of guess where he's going to throw the torrent, he doesn't have time to throw out the X if he gets gone on, everything becomes a little bit more wonky for him. Yeah, the damage aspect of those abilities are unlikely to hit when he's scrambling to try and keep himself alive. And then the defensive aspects of the Coco's Rum is just going to be too late to have an impact in the team fight if you've already bursted at least one hero and are moving on to the next. I think if you're OG, though, you continue to try to play aggressively. All your cooldowns are relatively short. No-Tail just used the boat at bottom lane, but it's almost going to be up in 20 seconds again. Your Phoenix Egg is cooling down just about now. There's not a whole lot of items that they necessarily have to wait for. Miracle's also in fighting shape, so I wouldn't be too surprised if they go for the, another Infest combination pretty soon. Both sides, it just depends on initiation. Navi might be able to do that. They're going to smoke themselves up just around their own Ancients. It's Dendi carrying that extra Mithril Hammer, probably going to go into a BKB. Now she jumps inside the pit. So they want to go for Roshan, but the Lions have already been drawn out by Fly. He's seen this coming. And it's said to OG, group up behind your own tier one tower. No there was no vision though. from the Dire side for this, and they're moving up, but they're headed. Are they going to recall? Yeah, they're coming down. They're coming down. Roshan at one third of his life. Seneko going to break the smoke. The Dire no more oh, see that. They find us over on Crit, and now they jump out. Seneko wants to find the last who's over on Moon, but the ship's going to hit perfectly into the Nova. Then he's going to drop as well. They came out to fight. They're going to instantly regret it. Dendi, Mana Void will pick him up. Three heroes gone and Roshan is still licking his wounds and OG will put him out of his misery. That's going to be a pretty Aegis for Miracle as they just walk in. DR Ross still around the area but he gets spotted by that sentry. Yeah, the end of the second. Him. Have they got enough damage? It's the Shadow Dance, pounce away. Who cares? You just take Roshan. <laughs> I'm surprised Navi didn't actually finish Roshan before they came out to fight. So they wanted to instantly jump. I think they just had to. Yeah. You, can't, you can't allow OG to set up around that pit area. The Phoenix Egg is going to be even more effective. 
Yeah, right they, on top of that cliff. They have three heroes that are really good around. Roshan, you've got the Lion Stun of the Lion. You've got the Kunkka's AoE of both Torrent and the ult. And then obviously Supernova is one of the best abilities to fight around the pit. So when they see an opportunity for initiation like they did on the Lion, you just kind of go for it. But unfortunately, that uh, Lion was just a carry-in of the plague that is the Lifestealer Infest. That was really good positioning by Soneko. He was able to ca catch the line out, but unfortunately for him, his team is just a little bit too under farmed to make any use of it. They right. may have a blink dagger for Soneko soon. I don't know. I almost feel like they just need more damage at the same time. So, uh, yeah, fail Discord. Sort of think Navi, they can still probably take an engagement. They do have that AA Ice Blast. You've seen what can happen when you start the initiation onto the Kunkka. It is going to get a little bit harder though, as OG are probably just going to learn from that uh, terrible lesson and just say, okay, we're going to send our side heroes first. Crit can always scout. It doesn't really matter if you lose that lion. <laughs> the Nortel split push is real. With BT's next marks the spot, combining it with Veil of Discord, pushes out the bottom lane, instantly returns to the mid. Didira very close to Moon and Crit. The sentry ward's over on Crit, so he's going to be a little bit more careful. Hotel. Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> is he trying to grab the rune? It's almost like he's trying to bait a fight out. Did your Ra's looking for one? He's right behind Moonbeat. Yeah, he doesn't want to go on him. Did your Ra wants to be able to find the line, or maybe set up a kill on like a core and like the Kunkka, but there's just no openings there. OG are protecting themselves rather well. They let Miracle do what he wants. He's moving around the map, and everyone else is kind of staying little grouped up. That right there, by the way, is it shows how important that tier one tower mid is. As soon as they cross that line, if there was no tier one tower there, then general almost surely just continues to go up and DR follows him and they can probably get the kill onto moon or crit. But because of that's available to them, they're just so afraid to make it. They're moves. doing it again. Tower defense the bottom, general can't get a jump and the tier one tower survives. Yeah, unless you've got a Yules, you're not gonna be able to stop that. Alright, they're gonna force it. So T1 tower go down on bottom, but Miracle opens up on the tier 3 tower. No one wants to fight him. He's still got Aegis, Manta, having that Abyssal Blade too. You don't want to overcommit on an Aegis carrier, especially not an anti-mage. The rest of his team is making his way forward. They're going to see that coming, but still, this is the last hero that you want to overcommit on as OG or content to... Oh, did he run? He walks map. out. I think the Sentry will They'll get the Hex. I'll get the stun. Boom pops out and the ship's almost a victory boat. And they still have two more minutes to make use of that Aegis by yep. pushing Angron. One minute without the Slark, no buyback. Oh god, and he made just 20,000 net worth. <laughs> yep. He's a little bit farmed. There's your infest again, so Crit looking to go for round two. Still got Finger of Death. Which I think by now it's, been, it's a lot more than two. Keep that refraction up, Dendi. You never know when the lion blinking is gonna happen. Unless the kick on Miracle with the silence, no town jumps in. Yes, the X mark on General, the four star pushing him back into the tower, but Miracle jumps with the mana void. Arsenal cops a lot of spill damage. But Miracle gonna get cold feeded up. Remember, he's still hit by that Aghanim's Ice Blast level two. I mean, how are you maybe he doesn't really care that. anyway, does he? Yeah, they're like sitting what, like behind their racks and it doesn't matter. Like OG just did like guard three, two, one, go, and then they just instantly kill two heroes. Yeah, no tails initiation range with the X. If you just hover over his hero, it's more <laughs> yeah, than the screen. Right. How are you supposed to play against that when your team is already behind? There's no safe zone anymore for Navi. They were about as defensive as they could be. They were near the tier three towers closer than they were to their mid racks. If you can see the Kunkka, you are in danger. Yeah, that's pretty much what this game is devolved into right now for Navi. AR is desperately oh, trying to make axe. something. Oh, hype. Is it? I think so. The yeah. dragging axe. Well, okay, there's yeah. a question. Is there enough time left in this game to finish it? The back oh, he sees you. Maybe when he finds Dendi, that Observer was still up on the hillside. Doesn't pull him in at the right time, however. And the Ice Blast well on target. Oh, he's got the Tanaker from Bouldering Ford. They got the Silence on Fly, but can they kill him before he goes into the Nova? No, they can't. D-Run pulled back into the double turret with the Sun. Not picking down the back line. Bat Rider is gone. The Sun will land. Nirvara is there. And this may be the final fight. Navi is on the run. Drag him back. Bring him down. And GG. OG convincingly take game number two with a draft that had a couple of heads being scratched. But now we still sit there going, hey, we were having comfort heroes, but it wasn't enough. I think is now the time 
to stop doubting OG. Just let them do whatever they're going to do, even if it looks a little bit weird. Mid Kunkka, off lane life stealer. They're just so good that they're going to pull it off. Yeah, that's really the, such a dangerous thing, right? That a team can pull out some, you know, very different picks than what the, the meta kind of is saying you should be going for. They can pull out something entirely different in a grand final match like this and 